This is Ned's AFL Unpopular Opinions with Alistair Lynch, Tom Rockliffe and Dylan Leach. Well, they say The Simpsons has a reputation for predicting the future, but could we say the same for ourselves here at Ned's AFL Unpopular Opinions? How about this little segment from four weeks ago? Can Geelong be shit? Can Geelong <laughs> please be shit? I mean, you've had, it, you've had it. You've had it. No, no, they've, no, they're meant to be shit for a few years. Don't have this one year gap year of not playing finals. They're the only team that's undefeated. Ever since that segment aired, the Cats 0 and 4. Ask and you shall receive, fellas. And recently here at Neds, we ran a series of skits of fake AFL themed rounds. But given the recent events this weekend, it turns out one of them was actually real. The traditional umpires crack down on an arbitrary rule round. What's so special about this round of footy? It could be any weekend, any game, any time. You'll have absolutely no idea as to what rule it is or when they'll do it. Get him up, get him up. Maybe it'll just be for a quarter. Striking an opponent's elbow with your face. Maybe we'll only do it for one team. Maybe we can do whatever we want because we're the AFL. That's right, umpires crack down on an arbitrary rule round happened to be last weekend. As always, I'm joined by 2012 Marcus Ascroft medalist Tom Rockliffe. Thanks for having me, Dill. Lynchy cost me another three of them. <laughs> waiting for that. <laughs> I've been taken off the panel. Well, that's a good thing. <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> cause, that's Tom's lobbying. Finally nah. appealed to it. Yeah. yeah. No, nah, Lynchy's very Tom, fair, sees it very well. No, no, no Tom, Tom was lobbying for It wasn't Lynchy. It was... Andrew Hamilton or Greg Davis or one of those scum. Oh, it would have been Greg Davis. That's typical Greg Davis. Yeah, Dave, Davis has always had it in for you ever since uh, he left this podcast. And 1993 All Australian Alistair Lynch. Yeah, that was that wasn't yesterday, was it? No. <laughs> did you see our pregame? Speaking of, I did. Wasn't yesterday. You were listed as 1993. Yeah. Thirty-one years ago, Lynch. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. That's but what they, they had, had you vision. listed. That's what they had you listed in the Super on Fox on was the it? weekend. Yes. Uh, the Bris- so the Brisbane Hawthorne game. Mm. I was next to Dermot. And uh, they had us in the pregame some vision from the 1992 uh, pre would have been Foster's Cup Grand Final oh, preseason yes. Grand Final yeah. where um, we had he had the knee on my head mm. like <laughs> in a wrestle then I got him in the headlock then he got me in the headlock mm. and was driving his big crooked mitts into my eyes and mouth mm. and um, it's just. I, a- I bit him. <laughs> I did. I absolutely locked onto him. I thought, I'm in a bit of strife yeah. here and just locked on. Did you get suspended? No, no. So, okay. And, uh, and yeah, that was so caught on camera. So Dermot had the long flowing locks <laughs> like he, had he the, still has now. And you now. had the moulet. I had the, um, yeah. Yeah, the brown mullet where it's mm. a bit more grey these days. But, um, yeah, that, geez, a long time ago. Mm. But no, and, and, and by the sorry. players looked after each other. Yeah, like he yeah, would have play, had when, his eye gouge. Well, you know what it was? When the player's code was alive and well. Dermot said exactly that. So it was on. That was the first quarter. And they've got vision of us walking off the ground, just having a laugh and... Yeah, you know, the siren's gone, down tool, she's all good. Bring back the player's code. Absolutely. That, that would have been Dermot's fifth night premiership. Five-day, five-night Dermot. That would have yeah, been his fifth. Yeah, it would have been. That would have been Probably his fifth. Yeah, it would have, it would have been five-day, four-night when that happened. Now it it's five-day, five-night. You would have been about 31, 31 years ago. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey, by the way. <laughs> Chris won early. That, that's a nice yeah, one. nice. <laughs> by the way, it was actually great to actually have you up in the commentary box this that week. We good. enjoyed that. Oh, I, I enjoyed it as well. Yeah. And, um, and you got some good games saw too. Saw some real good games. And yeah. it was my first visit to GMHBA Stadium since the renovations. Well, it's good that you've made the visit Seven because, renovation. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it, how good is it? Well, it, it? You should appreciate it because we've all paid for it with our hard work and tax dollars. Well, you know what? Yeah. It, it's great. Yeah. And it doesn't look anything like um, because that ends closed in. Yeah. It, uh, it's closer to Marvel Stadium than the old Cadinia oh, right. Park. It yeah. looks real good. It's a oh, yeah. great venue. Well, it should be because you know. Oh come on! Our money. Uh, that's what we've all. Well, we've you all vote Labor all the time. It's your fault. It's not Labor. The, both Labor and the Liberals have funded both parties. It's marginal. Everyone's pork barrel kid in your park. Where was Elbow singing this week? You'd be happy with him singing somewhere this week. Where? South Sydney or something, was he? Oh, I don't know where Elbow was. <laughs> you would have been. You're a, are you a little little Labor? Yes. Bloody, I used to be. In the party? In a previous Party life. member? In a previous life, Hand yes. out the tickets, the leaflets at the polling booth. I'm from a Labor Party family. I'll be holding Stephen Miles. So I will not be doing that. <laughs> I most certainly won't be doing that. Let's move on. Uh, <laughs> enough of politics. Uh, 
I want to go back to my earlier point. Uh, umpires crack down on an arbitrary rule round. Uh, now, as I mentioned earlier, we here at Neds wrote that as a bit of a sketch, as a, ha, <laughs> that couldn't possibly happen. Well, I think it did happen this weekend. I, I didn't know that that was actually a rule, to be honest. So we're, we're, talk, we're talking about the free kick in free the 3-0 Collingwood yeah, game? Yeah, yep. that started at midnight, which it, everyone was in bed, so no one's saying. The rule is um, delaying the game. Yeah, so, you got to mm. hand it back straight to the umpire. Yeah. But I knew that you like a free kick, you have to hand it to the direct player. I didn't actually yes. realise that you had to throw it back to the umpire. No, I, must have been, I didn't. I knew uh, they went through stages... Um, uh, when I was playing, probably even at Fitzroy, I reckon, mm. when there was um, delay in the game. Now, I got a feeling Richard Osmond got a week, got a right. week suspension for th- throwing the ball over the fence. I think or I've seen like vision that. of that before. Yeah. And I've seen, but that's obvious. That, I, I think yeah, it's all about yeah. intent. I don't understand how it's de- delaying the game, though, or time wasting, because it. The clock stops, doesn't it? When he blows his whistle for a ball up, it's, the clock stops. I think it's also got to do with players trying to space out and get to certain yeah, positions. Yeah, that, that, I understand that. Yeah. But it wasn't It wasn't de- no, like an intent it, to delay the game or so anything So that like one that. wasn't. In, in retrospect, when you see the highlights over the last couple of days, they've shown the build-up as an accumulative effect, yeah. I think, where players were delaying so, it and he got a bit frustrated at times, yeah. the umpire. Um, but that one... Who was it? Simon Meredith? No. Uh, uh, Nichols. Matthew Nichols. Nichols. Matthew Nichols, sorry. Yep. Uh, Matthew Nichols has come in. It actually didn't delay that stoppage for half a second. No. Because, yeah. He just had enough. He, he'd only just got there, had his back, um, the player had his back to him. So oh, it's, uh, And I don't think you have to give it to boundary umpires. I think you can just throw it. Like if it goes out of bounds and you're there, you can just throw it on the ground. I don't were you think ever you warned? Yeah. So when the umpire, you, were right you ever there. warned about this in your career? No, like when the umpires even, came to uh, training or As I said, I didn't even like know it was a rule. Like sometimes like, you can just leave it on the ground. Like you don't have to give so it So it turns out it is a rule. But yeah, it, so it you just, can't drop it on the ground. No, but you can leave on, it on the ground. If you're on the bottom of the pack, you can get up and just leave yeah. it there. Mm. So it turns out it is a rule, but it, it just had all the feelings of getting a parking ticket for you've been parked for four hours. Yeah. But I'm getting I'm but, I'm the parking inspector giving you a ticket for being parked for four hours two minutes. But for all the Collingwood supporters out there saying that's the reason they lost. Well, no, it's you not. Didn't you know. gave up a twenty five point, lead, point and lead, and that's uh, the same as yeah. Anthony Rocker's point goal. That's not the reason you lost. But you lost by nine points. They would have lost by three points if that was accepted. <laughs> yes, that's right. They, they didn't have they didn't have super goals in AFL grand finals. Four points. Four points. Oh yeah, good point. Yeah. <laughs> Very good, good point. point. Yeah. Correct point, yeah, that's I right. should say. But there's been a lot of stuff said over the weekend about the holding and ball interpretation. I saw well, both, that's... both Vossi and Dimmer were getting very frustrated. Uh, uh, Brad that's... Scott also, who happened to be football manager before he took the job at Essendon. Um, Michael Gleeson in The Age wrote a pretty good column, said, you've got to pity the umpires. It feels like the AFL is, uh, you know, dedicating a round to praising them but making their jobs near impossible by telling them to enforce certain things. Is it more... Do we need to get more frustrated at the football department than the umpire saying you've got to actually be practical in what you want to crack down on? Let's the, leave the umpires alone. The, yeah. I reckon it's a shockingly tough job it's, and made tougher. And the amount of grey area week. they've got to enforce as well. Yeah. I think the impact, the, the Friday, it was a, a cumulative effect, though, wasn't it? Yeah. Thursday mm. night, the 50-metre penalty gets paid that wasn't yep. there and yeah. then that call. But the holding the ball has been a joke for 10 years, I reckon. Yeah. Probably longer. Like, um, when you grow up, or well, when I grew up um, in the 90s, early 2000s, it was you have to dispose of the ball correctly if you tackle. Correct. But now it's just you've got to attempt to get rid of it. So you can drop the ball. The dropping the ball is no longer a rule. So if hold, you haven't hold, had holding, prior opportunity. Yeah, yes. yeah. And then you're just trying to force it out. So they want, I know why they want to do it. They want to keep the game flowing. But they need to start to pay with the free kicks because it's going to contribute to more concussions. Absolutely. We've seen on the weekend where I think it was at Kerno got tackled. Yeah. The player could have taken him to ground, probably puts him in a dangerous position, maybe hit his head. But so it reinforced the training Mac Andrews had, yeah. don't slam him. Yeah, so he holds, but then the umpire allows him to do a 360, kick the ball forward. It's like, well, you're giving up. Like yeah. so, There was one at um, GMHBA Stadium as well. There was a 720. Yeah. And so just mm-hmm. waiting until there's a player that can give it off. So I think that's the, um, the quicker disposal or the quicker... 
pain of the free kick, that will disperse the congestion as mm. well because a free kick, so as soon as the whistle goes, everyone runs. Yeah. They all take off. So I think pay it earlier. And it's the, you still give them a chance, but these have gone on just far too long now. It's way too much leeway. Yeah. Well, you got to you pay a free kick. As you said, it yeah. opens the whole game up. But you pay more holding the balls. You reward the good tackles because you don't want to lose that from our game. We've already lost the true defence with the arm chopping for the... Or yeah, clubbing like, someone on the back of the head. Defenders go... Do now. It's taking you back to a good <laughs> yeah, old time, right. wasn't it? Yeah. Defenders go to take a mark and the forward will hit their arm and it's play on. But if a forward... Like, yeah. the role's reversed, it's a free kick. So I think they, they need a... You need to reward the, the good oh. tacklers in the game. But the, so the, the footy traditionalists would say, hang on, you've got to reward the, the person that's going to go and get the ball. But rest assured, they'll still get rid of it. They'll adjust very quickly to how long they've got. You you won't have players stand back and think, I'll wait for you, Rocky, to no. grab it and I'm going to tackle you. That won't happen. No way. So I think, um, yeah, just got to shorten that um, – that uh, the interpretation on prior opportunity and the time you've got to get out of that tackle. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if that occurred this weekend that they make that slight adjustment. And it's happened a fair bit this year when people have pointed out <laughs> things have wasted. But I think the AFL, and I think we all make mistakes. As of course players, we do. commentators, coaches, we all make mistakes. Or we've got to get better at things. Probably That's probably a better term. We want to improve things. Mm. There's nothing wrong with the AFL saying, we've probably let this slip too far, so we're going to tighten up on it. And almost Thursday night, Friday night, actually say, this is the way we're going to try to interpret it now. So you haven't got as long, but to come out and be open, yeah, because we're all on the same page. We're all in this together. And it's not like you shouldn't have to study it uh, Friday night and Saturday no. afternoon and go, what are they cracking? oh, they've what, changed what are they cracking now. Them? So uh, a very long time ago on television, there used to be a segment called What's Your Decision? <laughs> where the umpires would actually go on and explain why this free kick was given, what we were doing, what we're cracking down on. There's so much football media out there, us included. Why wouldn't you, if you're the AFL, actually get the umpires to explain and you know point out this week we're going to focus on this, next week we're going to focus on that? Absolutely a waste of time, Dil, because they've never come out and said they got a decision wrong, maybe once. Mm. In 15 years. They, they, if they said they got them wrong, I think everyone could accept they've that. Got, they've got a case but of the Fonzies of them. They can't say they're wrong. Our game is yeah. so grey in mm. so many areas that you're always going to have little instances where they're not quite clear. It's not black and white. So the interpretation, there's four umpires out there. I think they still miss stuff as well. But There's ways of saying you're wrong without saying you're wrong. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's PR 101. I'd imagine so, the AFL... If I, if I can go back to my old life in politics, there's certainly ways to say oh. you got it wrong without saying you got it wrong. But I think that the, probably the AFL concerned, we don't want to set the um, the umpires up to no. get mm. smashed. No. and But I think that's where that transparency and openness mm. that we're, we're all looking to improve, we're all looking to clarify any sort of doubt yeah. and try to limit the grey areas. The, the, the whole game is grey. Yeah. There's so much grey <laughs> and open to interpretation. The one, the perfect example is Draper when he fell on the ball oh. against the Crows a couple of what weeks ago. Oh, I don't know whether that was grey. That wasn't grey. <laughs> that was pretty <laughs> obvious. The <laughs> AFL came out and said um, the wrong decision was made, but then in the next paragraph said the way that they seen it, the correct decision was made. So it left it. It's, it's like, a bit like yeah. it's, it's a like there's the truth and there's exclusive yeah. truths and well, alternative yeah. truths, as uh, they say in US politics. Um, no, there needs to be – and I also think – to be fair, I think the general football public is wise enough not to blame the umpires now. Like it used to be the umpires having a shocker, but people are aware, well, hang on, yeah. they are being briefed. There's so much grey area. And I think the coaches are smart enough when they say what's going on. They they don't necessarily go, the umpiring was terrible. It's like the league needs to do this, this and that. So the feedback's actually reasonably would, constructive. It's not we was robbed if you don't mind umpire. Would, We're a bit smarter than that now. It would be the only game in the world that umpires the games differently, wouldn't we? Like Absolutely. Like officiate it differently from round one to a grand final. They're completely different. Oh, right? yes and no. I think I think there would be plenty of NBA or NFL fans who would beg to differ. Oh, but I don't think so. Not or, the way the AFL or, does. Um, and then we interpret if you, if you, it. If you follow the world game there's plenty of if you want to bring up the topic of yeah, VAR but the world, like, <laughs> the world game never changed rules we're changing three no. rules a season no. so but it's it, near impossible it also probably for the umpires it, it also it, it's also also a factor that the governing body of the actual sport is the actual same major league which means they can do whatever they want it's not like they have to whereas the world game you have to go through FIFA or cricket yeah. you have to go through the ICC for the, those <laughs> sorts of uh, things anyway it's it's an interesting discussion but yeah I would not be surprised um, this weekend if there's 
just a couple of adjustments, as always happens, and then we without go, an announcement, without an announcement, yeah. but we'll be able to tell you know Thursday night at the Port versus Carlton game what they're cracking down on. But yeah, that's where I think. Why do that? Just tell, tell us. Just tell us. Yeah, no, I'm with you. Don't, don't even say we're wrong or anything like that, but we're going to tighten things up. Yeah, absolutely. And they'll often send a memo to clubs, but they should do it to the whole footy community. Yeah, just, just put it on AFL.com so that the they've got commentators the communication and media channel. can... Absolutely. Well, I think that's important as well. Yeah, if you're communicating with the clubs, communicate with the media. Because everyone. We're yeah. talking to Yeah, the this fans. week we're looking at this. And well, that's right. If fans at the game and they've seen it on AFL.com, we're going to crack down on holding the ball. Yeah. At least they can understand it when they're well, at the game. That's where the spin doctoring... There's plenty yeah. of spin doctoring that can be done for this. They don't need to necessarily say they're wrong. And you mean they when they tune into the Ned's Unpopular Opinion podcast? Well, <laughs> well they listen. exactly right. They, they hear it from have you, here. Have you, have you not Correct. heard what Geelong's, how Geelong's been playing the past? Oh, months? really? Yeah, because I listen to this. Yeah, they, they, they did, didn't we win Geelong that flag a couple of years yeah, ago? Yeah, we did, actually. Yeah, we have a big influence <laughs> on the cats. Big, uh, what are your unpopular... Moving on, outside of umpiring, you got any... Uh, Unpopular out well, talking, statements. Uh, talking about whether it's the AFL or uh, the um, umpires got it wrong. I reckon the coaches got it wrong. Well, I've told you yeah. that the coaches hate coaches football. got it wrong um, at GMHBA Stadium. Um, the coaches oh, votes. Nice. Oh no! Yeah, Lecker Lear got two votes. Lecker two. Lear, well, he was clearly the the best uh, player. On and off the ground. Um, he was great, wasn't he? How many messages am I getting? You're very popular. That's actually the AFL yeah. listening to this yeah, podcast live, being recorded. Live, yeah. They get a live feed pumped into AFL House. That's how much influence we've got. That's Laura Kane messaging you right there. <laughs> that was. Um, <laughs> Lekka Lear. So ca- first game for the season, came out and uh, oh. just made an impression early and then late. And that mark. I've got to say... Got to say it, all of it. So Cam Mooney's interview post game as well was first class to talk to him and got out at Leck. He was he he was spewing because he dropped a mark two minutes before the end of the game and as, as he called it a soft drop. So um, it was roved by Geelong, kicked a goal. He had the courage to actually go for the next mark. I was probably putting my fullback's hat on and after dropping a mark, I reckon I would have gone and just smashed it as hard as I could to try to get to the boundary. Now that might have gone poorly, but he had the courage and obviously everyone around him encouraged him enough to go for the mark and took a winning mark it was amazing but then it was just better after Moons's interview the fact that he stood in the race for five minutes yeah. signing <laughs> autographs doing <laughs> selfies and had to wait for the song the high and I think Jace might have said it in the commentary as well the highlight of the year just that that oh. piece was magnificent. It's funny, isn't it? Because most defenders, I, I think, would be in the same boat. If yeah. they drop a simple mark, they're not very intelligent defenders. They're pretty basic, <laughs> so basic humans. Your, hang on, I thought Ruckman were the dumb ones. Well, they are. Ruckman, so Ruckman and defenders. So you, so you wouldn't get the defenders and the Ruckman at a Mensa convention? No. No. It's like the Australian fast bowlers almost. They're all in the same, <laughs> same club. <laughs> not too many brains amongst them. But... Yeah, that's a uh, that's a good take, Lynchy. I yep. think um, coaches' votes are a bit all over, over the shop at, at times. My take is that Friday night footy should start at seven, no later than seven o'clock. For us old thirty-four year olds, you're correct. old now, seven struggling o'clock. to correct. stay awake. Like the eight ten. That, that started at six. Now you got to be fair. You got you got to start at six p.m. in Perth. The game was yeah, in Perth. Yeah, I, know, I, right. know I was in Perth, but eight ten start for the Eastern on. Seaboard. It doesn't finish till midnight. And Friday night at seven fifty, not many kids are staying up to watch. Seven forty now. They've been really kind. A week for fans. Seven o'clock. Kick it off at seven. Yeah. Everyone's engaged. You've got your pizza or whatever on a Friday night. You're fishing chips. You've eaten them by six thirty, seven o'clock. You watch the whole game of footy. I must say, I'm a big fan of uh, the NRL. They've got the six p.m. Friday yeah. game. Yeah, that's a cracker. Yeah, and they play an yeah. eight o'clock one as well, but the eight o'clock one finishes well before the, the rugby, as well. Yeah, the rugby league yeah, only goes minutes. for two hours. Yeah, I'm a big big believer that you start at 7 o'clock and people will say, oh, they don't have enough time to get home from work, get yes, the kids but, or what. But just you're only doing pe- it. You're doing it maybe once or twice a year. You can ask your boss, yeah. say, I'm going and, home at 3.30 and, to say, pick the kids up, take them to footy. It's and better also, for kids at the game. They get home earlier yeah. than whatever time they get home. And also, like a, also, it's worth pointing out, a lot of people work from home on Fridays now. So the cities aren't as packed as well. Does anyone want. work? Everyone's even four days. Yeah, exactly. Work, work, and work. if they do come to work, they bring their dog to the office. <laughs> oh, you're talking about this. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, about, what about this? We'll, we'll find out from next week if this person's a listener. Yep. What about the dog out there it's on, on the, the desk. desk? Oh, the dog on the desk. What's going on here, Dil? Oh, <laughs> Good. Come on, Dil. I don't There's a dog that. on the desk. I might bring my cat into work just to make things oh. interesting here. Oh. Dogs, are, dogs in the workplace are a big That's no it. for me, not <laughs> in the office anyway. So, so it's, it's now... 
it's, forty it's, start and, yep. dogs and no on dogs. The desk. <laughs> Seven so o'clock is, start and no dogs on the this desk. This is Ned's AFL unpopular opinions, <laughs> and it's also Ned's workplace oh. unpopular opinions. We might get called in the HR. <laughs> yeah, <that>. we might <laughs> be. The, hey, the people bringing the dogs should be called in the HR. <laughs> I suspect when we come in. Oh, mate, hasn't listened to this. Oh, yeah. yeah anyway. You can probably hear us through the wall. Oh, no, probably, oh, okay. Hopefully. Goodness me. All right. Hopefully he hears it, gets the feedback. <laughs> What's your unpopular opinion? Or the umpires? No, it's not the umpires. Okay. Interstate clubs. And that's right, I'm using the phrase interstate clubs. Oh, interstate. Clubs. That Be gets careful. under our skin. Yep. Be interstate. What's, so what's interstate? interstate? The club's not from Victoria. Yeah, that's right. All right. Now, be careful. They might get a lot, lot of frequent flyer points for the travel they do for all the away games, but uh, right now they've got enough frequent winger points to give them platinum status for hang life. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Now, take our friends out west, for instance. Two clubs based in the world's most isolated capital city are somehow shocked. And it's taken them nearly 35 years to work out that they've got to travel every second week. One week at home, one week away. Literally like everyone else from Perth who's a FIFO worker. Now, have West Coast only just noticed that this is a national competition? Now, this report on the SEN website, I just want to read this. Under a proposal discussed with the AFL, the Eagles and Dockers are suggesting two Victorian teams once every five years play a home game at Optus Stadium and therefore one less home game in their home state. How about no? Don't mind right. that. Now, WA clubs, if you want to play in a national competition, how about your state actually pull the trigger on the secession vote you made in 1933, which with two-thirds yes majority got up to make WA its own country, and therefore the waffle becomes a national league and you don't have to travel east coast every second week. And what about the Sydney Swans? Oh, the Sydney Swans. Football's marginal electorate. Speaking of the pork barrelling and electorates. <laughs> oh, right, yeah. Swans chairman. Oh, script again. Another yeah. five pages. Swan, five pages. Oh, no. What was the five page of last time? To, 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 oh, to, to, to be fair, the scripting is when spaced you walk out. out at three quarter the, the, time. Yeah, the scripting is spaced out so I can read it. Right, yeah, okay. <laughs> Swans chairman Andrew Pridham, in an interview with Glenn McFarlane in the Herald Sun, said, I'm yet to hear a good reason why you wouldn't have a best of three grand finals. Pretty boy. I can give you a good reason. You've lost <laughs> your last boy. three grand finals. It might be defamatory. I'd be fascinated to see if the Swans win the flag this year. And uh, we go up to Andrew Pridham and said, uh, Andrew, congratulations. You've won the premiership, but you reckon we should have another two grand finals? I think he'd say yes. Yeah. He'd say yes, would he? I think so. Pridham also bemoans the travel the Swans have to partake in. Pridham goes in the Herald Sun with uh, Glenn McFarlane interview. One disadvantage is we travel every second week and we don't have the media coverage you get in Victoria, South Australia or Western Australia. You ever read Sydney newspapers or Sydney radio? You don't want to be part of that. Andrew, there's a pretty simple solution for the Sydney Swans to cut down on travel. Go home to South Melbourne. It's been 40-odd years. If you want to reduce your club's travel load, maybe you just need to go back to the Lake Oval. Yep, the fixture's unfair, but you've probably got a better chance of getting a train to Tullamarine Airport working and actually operating than the commercially compromised fixture that is the AFL. It's time to build a bridge, or should I say a harbour bridge, and move on. Well, it's a VFL competition, isn't yeah, it, with a few interstate v teams? Yeah, that's it. It's, oh, Stop the whinging. No, no. The, Stop the, the Perth teams, you've got to factor in no. for me. Yeah, go on, Tom. So they travel to the airport, say okay. half an hour drive. Yeah. You've got to be there an hour before, Great. four or five hour flight, and then you've got an hour on the bus. So it's a full day travel for them. Mm -hmm. And yep. for your Richmond and Collingwood that play 17, 18 games in Melbourne, it is an unfair advantage. So uh, that theory... They get the brazen bits when you've got to go to Marvel. Yeah, yep. yeah. Crack, crack the shits when you've got to cross the, the bridge to go, the Yarra to go over there. Have you seen the traffic down Flinders Street? No, so they are at a disadvantage. And if you yeah, can, I, I understand it's always going to be lopsided. Um, <sighs> and I understand what they're saying. They get a home game um, for the gather round that's come in. Mm. It's not the worst idea to have a Melbourne team play one home game every five years you understand, in Perth. You understand that me Isn't saying... It? No. Like, it's not that bad. No, it's not. Well, if they market it right, look, it's probably a good idea, but for the benefit of stirring people up on social media, <laughs> they need to get You're over already it. already backtracked. No, I'm not backtracked. But you're five page yeah. rant. You've it's not a five page. It's literally a one page rant. I spaced it out so I could read the script properly. It's, uh, oh. it's one word a line. Yeah. yeah like, I want to get Come some goggles on. on. I mean, how long is it? But how long have the people in Perth realised that people in Perth complaining about travel? You're the world's most isolated city. Or Darwin. Darwin. Darwin, they're playing Darwin and Alice Springs three times a year. <clears throat> They've got to go to Alice this week, actually. They, they do. They do. All right, and so, yeah, 
I, it's a disadvantage for West Coast and the Western Australian teams mm. and Queensland teams um, to win the grand final. Mm. But I, th- I think it's a clear home ground advantage to get you into the finals. Absolutely. Yeah. There is an advantage. Yeah. You've got a clear home ground advantage essentially you know, 11 times I, a I year. I can tell you, having gone to the footy at non-Victorian grounds and the footy at the two Melbourne grounds, it's a duopoly now, yeah. apart from Geelong, it feels way more like a home game at it would at the Gabba or the SCG or Optus Stadium than it does when you go to Marvel Stadium or the MCG. It's like you the, the only that. difference. The only difference in the home. Well, there is a little difference, but the, the difference are very subtle. It's like different people sit in the reserve seats, and there's a couple of different signs, but it's the same. Gra- it's the same aesthetics. It's the same gates, ground announcer. Match you wouldn't have experience. said that five years ago when Richmond had eighty thousand there every week. Now they've only got ten thousand. The turncoats that don't turn up for Richmond games. Oh, I'll now. turn it up, hey? Rockley. Well, you're talking about the last quarter. <laughs> yeah, walk out. Do you want to co? Tom, you'd wander know, off. Tom, you'd know about turncoat supporters. You played in front of about five thousand at the Gabba at one o'clock every Sunday during yeah. your career. Yeah, so you'd right. know about that. That was fine. He missed See, it. there was no home ground advantage <laughs> then, was it? No, clearly. Nick, you, you turned the Gabba, you reversed the Gabba in did. your era. We certainly did. <laughs> Gabba turned into a vegan restaurant the way that was. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> Righty, eh? Good right. point. Get it. No, and also, best of three grand finals. Turn it up, Swans. Fuck. They're keen on it. Well, they're idiots. What did you say then? Yeah, he, said, he was about to speak. He dropped the F bomb. I said they're idiots. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me swear. Do you reckon they'd seriously go, oh, we just won the premiership? No, no, no. We should have another two. I don't agree with the three. I think no. it's one grand final. Yeah, and it's, uh, just, it's just ironic given that they've lost their past three grand finals that they want the best of three. They will seriously push for three. It's not going to happen. And I think we said earlier in the year, now Andrew Island's on the commission. Yeah. Might. You're not getting best of three grand finals. No, I'm trying to get it over the line. Yeah. All right. Stupid this first idea. segment's gone for 45 minutes. Unpopular. It's about 20. <laughs> it's called unpopular opinions, not popular opinions. Moving right along. Uh, speaking of popular oh, things, yes. an actual popular segment on the show. Snapchat. 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 <laughs> no, that's an app. <laughs> Snapshot. Snapchat. You're, sending, you're doing segments on Snapchat. Well, I don't now, have Tom. Snapchat, but yeah, Snapchat. I hope so. Yes, yeah, so it can only lead to trouble on that app. It's Snapshot. Ryan's back. Tom's good to go. Let's have some stats. Let's learn and earn and do a multi. Yes. How'd we go last week? We got two from two from four. We got a leg up each. Yeah. Anyway. I don't feel comfortable when you're in there putting bets on. It's not. You got not very. Well, you did no, well, no chance. You, you did. You did as well as I did. Yeah, I know. But yeah, anyway, <laughs> here they are. <laughs> All the betting trends you need to know from the world of footy. This is the snapshot. It's that part of the show where we got to chat some betting, and this week we're reunited at last. The push-up king, Tommy Rock. <laughs> Let's do it, mate. Let's get into it. How you feeling? Yeah, no, very good. Looking forward to the push-up challenge. Obviously, mental health for men and uh, everyone actually is really important. So that's uh, a good cause, Ryan. But um, let's uh, get this multi back on track. We've got to have a win at some stage again, don't we? Oh, fingers crossed, mate. We're due. Uh, I think things have been pretty bleak with Dill over the last couple of weeks, but we'll get into that in just a second. First cab off the rank this week. It's uh, been a big talking point over the last 24 hours. Collingwood's injury crisis. Uh, I've just sent you the picture of their list of outs heading into Friday night's game against the Doggies. Mason Cox has gone down with the knee. Maya Chef not back until round 14. Jeremy Howe still doubtful with the groin. Tommy Mitchell, round 13. Same for Jamie Elliott. The list goes on and on. Um, pretty, pretty plain and simple question for you here, mate. We're getting about $3.70 for the Pies to miss out on the finals, which would be extraordinary considering they won the flag. Um, would you take that price, knowing that list of outs? Uh, they're out for a while. Dugowie's a big one as well. He's not back until round 16. So they're just hanging on at the moment. They've been good the last few weeks. That The buyer, uh, the draw, two draws will hurt them, I think, come um, season's end. So they're going to have to go really well in the back half of the season to make the eight. It's, it's worth worth a little nibble, isn't it? When you've got that mm. list of injuries, you want your best players out there. Um, and we've seen what happens when you don't have your best team available. Richmond fallen absolutely off the cliff. Brisbane a little bit. We'll chat them a bit more. But I think uh, going into Friday night, there's some good value about the Western Bulldogs at 225 um, head-to-head against Collingwood with, with their outs. It's a very fascinating market. Um, I'm curious, though, to get your thoughts on just the injury crisis in general. Do you think it's because 
the preseason's too short? Is it this on again, off again nature of the buyers this year? What do you chalk this up to? Yeah, no idea. I think there's 150 plus, isn't there, on injury list at the moment. So um, it's not ideal. Obviously, the professionalism and the way players go about it and clubs and organisations that they pour heaps and heaps of money into this and resources. So I don't think it's under-resourced. Um, it could be a, a combination of factors, but maybe we're been asking the players to do too much. I mean, when you have an off-season now, you have literally a week or two off and then you start running again or you start exercising again. And so your body's only having that sort of short period of time off a couple of weeks and then you're back into it. Yes, it's not a full six, seven days a week, but it's three, three major sessions a week and, and weights as well. So you, you're constantly going for pretty much 12 months of the the year around i don't think that starting the preseason a bit later um and then bringing the games forward has contributed to it i think maybe maybe it's time that the players actually get a bit more of a decent rest in the off season make it mandatory that you have four weeks i know it it'll be harder for, for guys that put on weight etc to come back but I think if you, you let the players actually rest, their body recover over a four-week period instead of a two-week period, they're going to be much better um, in the long term. I'm still not convinced this isn't just some sort of ploy from Craig McRae to have his side rested for the finals. You never know with him. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, we've got a big game on uh, Thursday night. Big clash between uh, a couple of the top 2018 draft picks uh, and Sam Walsh and your boy Zach Butters when the power take on the Blues. Um, Carlton's midfield stood up really nicely last week in a really tough battle against the Gold Coast. Walsh and Cripps both had 30-plus touches individually in that game. But is a little bit quiet uh, in the touches count, but did have the two goals against North Melbourne. And uh, worth mentioning, too, that these two names are pretty uh, high up in the Brownlow market. But is $13, Walsh at 21 himself. Look, mate, are you confident in backing Walshy or Butters here to have 25-plus, 30-plus? What can we steer the punters into when it comes to the disposals markets this week? Yeah, I'd probably lean more towards Walsh to have more disposals, um, probably 30-plus there. Butters maybe 25. I think Butters will have more of an impact on the game, um, as silly as that sounds, probably that Walsh is going to have more disposals, but Butters will have more of an impact. I think Butters coming out the front of stoppages, um, ability to hit the scoreboard, hit targets inside 50, I think he's impact. Um, and score involvements will be higher, but I think Walsh will have more to dispose. Walsh gets uh, in those contests a lot more. I think Butters is more the the zing around the contest and, and ping out the front, um, and it's really impactful when he does that. So I would be leaning towards maybe Walsh 30 plus, maybe even 35 plus, depending who Drew goes to. I'd imagine Drew would probably go to Cripps. And then Butters uh, 25 plus, but also will hit the scoreboard. So I'd probably take him 25 plus and two plus. Girls. There you go, honors. Hot tip from the man himself. Um, another team, your, another one of your former teams, I should say, Brizzy Lions. Um, I feel like you're happy to put a pen through their finals hopes after just coming off second best to my Hawks last week. <laughs> Jeez, it was good, wasn't it? Yeah, um, the Hawks up and about. Yeah, we are up and about. Uh, bogey teams, though, as far as it goes for Brisbane, fifth straight loss to Hawthorne last weekend. Worth mentioning that none of those losses have come in Queensland, mind you, but... Um, just felt like another sort of cold game from Brisbane where things just didn't go right. Looked like they were going to get on top in that third quarter and just couldn't quite get the job done. Handball first approach isn't working and just feels like there's some players that uh, could be playing for different clubs maybe next season. McCluggage, Charlie Cameron, I don't know. There's a lot of names that Ooh. fans aren't happy with right now. But um, <laughs> any faith in uh, Brisbane making the eight um, after they return from the bye this week? Still getting $2.75 for the Lions. Yeah, it's funny when teams get bogeys like Hawthorne. I, I remember Richmond was mine when we were at Brisbane. I don't think I ever beat them there over a nine-year period. So um, quite incredible when teams just get run-ons against. Uh, Brisbane, they've got the week off. This week, they might as well have the rest of the season off, put the queue in the rack. They're not playing finals this year, and nor should they. I think they should look to um, almost rejuvenate uh, a little bit like what Sydney did last year when they, they got rolled. They, they couldn't quite get in, even Geelong um, to a degree as well. Um, they made a decision probably six weeks out to start to send guys into into surgery. Um, it benefits you with picks. They've got a lot of injuries as well. But, yeah, they need to start to make some tough uh, decisions at selection. I wouldn't be trading your A, a graders, um, Cameron, McCluggage. I try and keep on to them, but there is guys that are going to have question marks over them um, moving forward. One guy that 
you just want to see more of. I love him as a player when he's up and about. He's a, a champion bloke as well in the um, times that I've met him. Cam Rayner, he just needs to have more impact consistently for that Lions team. Number one draft pick, a lot of pressure. We know that he's had some injury concerns in the past, but he has all the attributes to dominate games. We've seen him dominate quarters, but he comes in and out of games. He needs to really become a consistent four-quarter player for the Lions. Um, Cameron's been out of touch. Danaher as well, that forward line. Do they bring Hitwood back in this week? I don't think they do. I think that they might even bring him back through the, the reserve. So... Yeah, they need to just be a bit more firm. I think at selection, start to reward um, some VFL players that are playing well. A guy like Jared Lyons consistently performs week in, week out. Even when he comes into the senior team, he has his 20, 25, and he's consistent in his approach. So I think they need to start to reward those players at VFL level now. Uh, where they sit, I think you can put a line through them for finals. I've always felt like Rayner could be that sort of player that does eventually play for another club and the Lions are left kicking themselves in five years' time when he basically restarts his career. Speaking of restarting though, we've got to get into this multi, mate. Ryan and Rocky are cooking up another multi. Surely it gets up this week. Um, I don't even know how you went last week with Dill, so you can refresh me on this one. Uh, we got two out of four. I think Dill got one leg and I got one leg. I took uh, Melbourne to beat St Kilda comfortably, which they did, even though they gave up three late goals. And I think I had Tom Stewart to have um, 25 plus. He was pretty quiet in that game. I can't even remember what Dill, Dill had. I just tune out when Dill normally speaks particularly in this segment but um yeah time to move forward so i'm going to uh rip into this one first and uh i'm going to go jeremy cameron against richmond i think he's going to have a fill up i think geelong have been quiet i think he's the man for the job i'm going to back him for four plus that's huge four plus goals and i'm going to take lacocious on sunday afternoon as well i think king will get uh get the mckay match up and i think lacocious may get off the chain chain i'll take him two plus i think they're going to play him forward for the rest of the season dim has admitted that they got it wrong when they sent him back so i'd imagine he'll play in the forward line so i'm comfortable to take him two plus Sticking with the player markets, I like it. I am going with that same game. I'm taking the Suns 1-39 to against the Bombers. 7-5 and five off a previous loss over the last 12 months. We know they're very tough to beat up there on the Gold Coast. Um, and I like Melbourne to cover against the Dockers in Darwin. Uh, Frio has been belted in their last couple of games at TIO Stadium. Um, I think it's about a 13.5 point line. Um, so that seems pretty generous in my book. So to recap, we've got Melbourne to cover against Frio, the Suns 1-39, to Lacocious 2-plus goals in that same game against the Bombers, Jezza Cameron 4-plus. This is a big one for us, $22.34. $22.34. That game is in Alice Springs as well, not in Darwin. So I don't know, oh, whether, that, I don't, just, yes, I don't know right. whether that affects your decision or not. You're happy? No, no, no. Still? Northern Territory, same state. Or same territory. Same <laughs> Tough for the doctors to travel. $22 um, is juicy. It is very juicy. I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about this, actually. I think we've made some good selections here. I don't look at that and go, I'm not comfortable with any leg. Mm. So yeah. if we can get that up for the punters at 22.34, oh, happy we'll days. Modern day heroes, mate. <laughs> you're legend, you can become a Neds legend. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, you can find that multi in the special section on the Neds app. Good chat as always, Rocky. We'll do it next week. Good on you, Ryan. Go on, give it to temptation and treat yourself because it's time for Dylan's Delights. Skyrockets in flight. Afternoon delight. You are listening to Ned's AFL Unpopular Opinions. My name's Dylan Leach. I've got Alistair Lynch. He's back with us in the studio. Back. Yep. Rocky, good snapshot. Yeah, $22 multi this week. 22 I know Lynch is not allowed to, but... Oh, true, true. Very, very Rich Richie Benno odds. There. Do you want to hear it? Yeah, go, go we, again. Let's... Yeah. Oh, I think everyone just heard it. Yeah. Uh, let's no, recap you it. because you were out. Yeah, you got to put earmuffs on. Yeah. Melbourne, minus 13 and a half against Fremantle. You know, very nice. Springs. Yep. Gold Coast Suns to win by 1 to 39. I like it. Lacocious to oh. kick two. Plus, Ooh, yeah, that's right that's right. not atrocious. <clears throat> and Jeremy Cameron against Richmond to kick four plus. Big day out for Big Jezza. He's got yeah. to have a. He's going to have a fill up. You know, is he now? Richmond's go. VFL team reserves. Yeah, he will you would, absolutely. Fill you would up. hope that Geelong would try against. That's the fir it's the first time you've been down there for a while, isn't uh, it? Uh, Twenty seventeen was the f last time we played at uh, say, uh, down Edinburgh in Geelong. Park. We played there more than Collingwood, Essendon, or Carlton has in the last yeah. twenty odd years. So anyway, and Geelong. 
I think it's the first time. Uh, what did I say about Geelong? Uh, GWS is the first team since Lynchy's mob to win four in a row four at Geelong. In a row. And yep. uh, it's the first time since 2015 the Cats have lost two in a row at Geelong. And the and first that's... time Chris Scott's lost four in a row in any one season. As, as I said, that edit that segment we did. Geelong. You did. You I'll claim did. it. You, yeah. I'll claim it. I'll end, I, Richmond started there and I ended it. <laughs> you stopped a train. Now, Dylan's delights this week. Firstly, Tom, I never knew you were a big... I always knew you to be a bit of an environmentalist. No, nah, I'm certainly not. No, you are. Nah, you I, are. You're all about drive, reducing nah, waste and diesel cars. Well, how come you're recycling <laughs> non renewables? <laughs> yep. Coal. Coal. Well, how come you're recycling hot takes on your other programs? Well, they said it was that good of a take on oh, Neds all right. that they wanted to run it on Triple M as well because so, it was that good. We had a bit of feedback about the 16 teams. And it, it seems to be a fair few people. I would say it. 85% of just, um, people out there have supported it. It's, uh, just, I'll just read some you, of the you're comments gonna nit, here. You're going to nitpick <laughs> these ones out? No, no, no. Okay. No, Go on. I'm fair and belted. Andrew JP writes, The old Australian rugby league got 20 teams and 22 when Super League and the ARL split in 1997. It was too much. We're not America where they can have 30 teams spread across the country. 12 to 14 teams in both codes is ideal as you can have a proper home and away draw without it going on forever. Uh, Kerry Hayes writes, he's right, spreading the pool too thin, make Vic teams move instead of adding. Yeah. Relocate so, Richmond. Relocate Richmond, you say. <laughs> You're an idiot. <laughs> they, could, they could follow you out at three quarters. Uh, Nathan Hall and Smith <laughs> writes, first time you've made sense. There you well, go. that's Rock, nice. You've been in the Thank media you. for a few right. years now. There you go. Um, no, you've been. I've switched off the last two years. Colin Dunlop. Uh, someone says it'll end up twenty teams. Tom, it was actually pretty. Someone says bring in relegation. Well, I don't know if you relegate, but again, yeah, yeah. getting back to my relegate. point of sixteen, I just don't think the depths there across mm. the board. Um, and the reasons for that is we've seen teams with injuries; they can't mm. they can't replace them. You you make it sixteen teams, you can, mm. and we all hear about and. I can only speak to my hometown, Benalla. When I grew up, we had six local teams, under 12s, under 14s, under mm. 16s. They have one team now in Benalla that has to travel to another town to play. So Have they been complaining about the travel load that they've got? No, I'm not saying that, but I'm just saying... Some, that are they trying to push for other country the, teams to play games in Benalla? The AFL what? won't admit it, I don't think, oh, but okay. I think the numbers of boys particularly boys is dwindling mm. i know that participation rates are risen but girls. i would say that would be fe mostly females i reckon mm. males is dropping off Come country, on, country leagues are struggling yep um premier leagues golden valley they used to have really good competition i don't think it is what it is anymore and i think the depth's not there i think that's more i think it's not just a football issue but that's a socio-economic well, i think so everyone's the screen mm -hmm. but the screen time as well people aren't playing uh, unless they're looking at the ads app and listening to our podcast of course and have that's as much right. screen time we grew well. up and just played sport i don't yeah. think it's necessary for kids to do that now and uh, no. another another comment here jeremiah johnson and i swear this is not a burner account what a clown expansion was interstate your knob <laughs> that's what he's written there Jeremiah Johnson and his picture is Cletus from The Simpsons I, that's not my burner I stand by it 16. you stand by it yeah. good on you 16 and reduced reuse recycle is that a, <laughs> you're going to say the same stuff on Dead Set Legend South um, Australia this week yeah I'll, I might go with the start time should be 7 o'clock yeah good. yeah good I have to review we'll, the game on a Saturday we'll, morning we'll, I don't we'll, see we'll, the second we'll, half we'll, most of the time I'm asleep on the couch we'll, we'll, send, you, we'll send you hot takes into Media Oka <laughs> on uh, the Sunday footy show now this week, Dylan's Delights. We're actually uh, coming up to a special anniversary tomorrow. Who are you going to smack this time? Lynchy, what would you regard as some of the greatest teams this century? Of course, you played in one of them. Yeah, I would have thought Hawthorne, mm -hmm. Geelong, mm -hmm. um, and the end of the last century, Essendon. Mm -hmm. Richmond. Mm -hmm. Brisbane. Yeah, great teams. Brisbane. Yeah. You've Brisbane. 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 Yeah. 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 Some, some really strong... We've been yeah. spoiled rotten. We have some of the so great Hawthorne teams. with the three peat, four in yeah. like all years. Yeah, um, Geelong, yeah. Three. Geelong mm. yeah, Richmond, mm. Essendon, like, Brisbane. Just some real dominant teams. But yeah. your point. Well, this week marks a very special anniversary of probably one of the best teams that ever took to the field. So what's that? Uh, we're twenty four. So you must be talking about someone like Port Adelaide no. that won no, no, twenty no. years ago. No, not Port Adelaide. They were a good side. They probably I mean, deserved they were, a bit more. Yeah, they did. And you know, yeah, you, you, I'm sure you've got plenty of people asking you about that grand final. We yeah, won't go it comes into that up occasionally. But no, I'm of course talking about St Kilda of two thousand four. The Saints. 
because uh, St Kilda opened the 20, uh, 2004. They cost us the grand final. They did. In 2004. Oh, they did. If they rolled Port Adelaide, mm. we would have got over them. Yeah, you, haven't, you, you remember that. But I thought Andrew Demetrio cost you the grand final. No. Oh, well, <laughs> that's what Akers said. <laughs> anyway, St Kilda won their first 10 games in 2004 and they looked unstoppable, led by Grant Thomas as their oh, coach yeah, and yeah. they won the Wizard Cup. In fact, it was a winning streak. Was that when they were holding that, the cup? Yeah, and that was the one. flat as a shit card, <laughs> they, was, they? <laughs> they couldn't have been more delighted to have won that Wizard Cup. But this week marks St Kilda beat Carlton in round, uh, t- round 11, yeah. 2004. And therefore, they won their first 10 games of that season. And it was the winning streak. St Kilda won their first 10 games of the 2004 season. And the good people <laughs> at Australian Football Video at the time released a DVD box set called The Winning Streak. They did not. Where you can watch all 10 of St Kilda's first 10 wins of season 2004. You've made that yesterday. They no, not, that, that is, is not real. That is 100% legitimate. <laughs> That's not real. That, I have not made that as a prop. Give this is here. absolute real. <laughs> You've made that up. No, that is 100% they legitimate. Yeah. Do you want to Stereo read the blurb? Over Geelong in the Wizard Cup. That's not real. Read the blurb. <clears throat> read the blurb at the back there, Lynchy. It was a 10-game streak that broke club records, broke established record. a new power side in the <laughs> AFL, mm-hmm. and set St Kilda on the way to a new and exciting chapter in the history of the mighty side. It was a, it was a, <laughs> that, it's a five-pack. It's, there's a five DVDs <laughs> you've here. Mocked, you've mocked no, that. that is absolutely 100% legitimate. There was, this DVD box set is absolutely real. Can they you? released a DVD box set to celebrate their 10 wins in a row. I can't have that. <laughs> Where do you buy it? Next to Lynchy's book in the yeah, no, store. I, I reckon, well, I, we found this one on eBay. But, um, no, this is absolutely – in fact, uh, there's one game I think you played in here. Uh, there we go. The uh, This is disc disc three, uh, rounds five and six. And maybe maybe you and I, after the show, can sit back and watch uh, round six in Kilda Brisbane 2004. The most talked about clash of the opening half of the 2004 season featured the challengers against the champs. And what a match that turned out to be. A bumper crowd at Telstra Dome saw one of the thrillers of the year and a game that went down by one telling kick. So sit back and enjoy a classic. That was Troy Schwartz and uh, I don't know if you remember that. Yeah, game. kick yes. on the far side. 52,539 at Telstra Dome. Yeah. Oh. Gerrick start to the year. Yeah, Gerrick. Oh, you, you can see Fraser Gerrick dominate. That's the year he kicked 100. So in the yeah. prelim he yeah. kicked his 100th, didn't he? Round one he's kicked seven. Round two, three. So he's at 10. Five in round three. Mm. Six in round four. So 21 after four. Four in round five. Yeah, I mean, why wouldn't you want to sit back and watch the winning streak? Only two in round six against you guys. A five pack for Fraser Garrick, I I get that. Five in round, oh no, we'll go round seven. Round seven, he kicked four. Five in round eight. Five in round nine. And then nine in round ten. This is 100% legitimate. I did not make this up. Yeah, you made it up. Right. You've made that over the weekend. No, I You're have bored. not made Instead that up. Instead of watching Richmond play, you were making this. No, uh, that maybe that was it. That can't be real. In the that last quarter when he walked real. out, instead that, of watching the that last quarter. That is 100% real. It's, oh, I suppose they've only won one flag in... Well, if you're a St Kilda supporter, I mean, not to sink the boot in, but in terms of your video oh. collection, you've got... <laughs> not to sink the boot We already have. We're already <laughs> way deep in sinking the boot in. You can watch the 66 grand final. You can maybe watch the 96 Anset Cup and... The winning streak. Well, and they also 11, did. They, they did draw. win. They, they had a grand final draw. They could watch that back. They did, but like they had an even better winning streak in two thousand nine, where they won their first twenty games. Didn't get a bloody oh, DVD box set for that. That's right. They didn't get a box set for this. They got a. Bo- they didn't get a box set for two thousand nine. They got it for this. They're a long way off winning ten games got, in a season. Have you got your two thousand? <laughs> have you got your two thousand thirteen NAB <laughs> Cup on DVD? Oh, it'd be out there somewhere. It'd be yeah. on YouTube or something. Two thousand thirteen is pretty recent. It might be a Blu-ray. You might get a Blu-ray version of your NAB Do they cup. make DVDs anymore? Lynch's still got I think they, no, they still sell. Oh, absolutely. Cars. They still sell. <laughs> no, prem- you, oh, you laugh. No, Bloody um, oath I have. <laughs> premiership. I, I know someone that works at JB Hi-Fi and they said premiership DVDs are still an all-time seller. So especially with Collywood winning, everyone wants to uh, lap it up. But Saints fans, <laughs> God. I we know one, times are we tough. We've run well, Fitzroy. We're the 10-game losing streak. Where do they steal the DVD players from, the Collingwood supporters? Oh, no. <laughs> they're pretty cheap these days. I'll just give them away for free. But... Um, yeah, indeed. Uh, so, St Kilda fans, I know times are tough at the moment and you're feeling a bit glum about where the team is headed for this season, but 
It is the 20 that year has anniversary. To be a take. It, no, it's not. <laughs> it is not. The 20 year anniversary of the winning streak. Sit back. <laughs> It's a DVD, as it says, this is a DVD pack to treasure. St Kilda at its very best. A snapshot of the state's Saints brilliance from rounds 1 to 10 in 2004 on DVD box set. You're listening to Ned's AFL Unpopular Opinions. Time to wrap up here on Ned's AFL Unpopular Opinions. I mean, yeah, just thinking about it, you know, 10 wins under Lenny Hayes and uh, Nick Rewalt, Cozzy, Luke Ball, Nick Del- Sorry, I'm just thinking. Right, you've made your point. The, the winning streak <laughs> there, just magnificent. All right, I ask you this every single week on the program. What are we looking forward to in round 12? The first of a bye round. So we've got Brisbane. GWS, North and Sydney all having a spell. Brisbane escaped us today. We should have spoken now, about it. Actually, but... before, no, no, they have not. Uh, before we go, are we putting a line through Brisbane 2024? Yes. Yeah, they... what, to win the flag. No, no, <laughs> Make that was, finals. to not that win the six, flag. That was not six play. weeks ago. They, uh, is, they've got no a chance of playing finals. They've got the buy this no, they've week. Got, they've got a chance of playing finals. They won't play finals. They, they won't play finals. Put a line through. They've got a chance of winning. They, they still a chance. They've still got the buy. They might as well not come back for the rest of the year. They might as well start to throw a couple of blokes in for surgery in the next few weeks. Whoever so, needs it, get everyone fresh so for 2025. The Brisbane Lions are a bit Lloyd Christmas at the moment, so you're saying there's a chance, dumb and dumber style. Unless they go on an incredible run, but the way they played on the weekend, they can't. They've got too many players yeah. out of form. Well, you look, you look at the – I reckon we looked at their draw two or three weeks ago and going, oh, yeah, they could get on a run here. Yeah. Mm. But the thing is they do what they did on the weekend. They, they have periods, they look okay, mm. and – I think we even said in the commentary, Derm and I going up at half time thinking oh, Hawthorne will f- fall over here and mm. Brisbane on the way. To Hawthorne's credit, they didn't, but Brisbane just is. And you talk about, you know, they've got injuries. So, what there was 17 prem- not premiership, grand final players still playing on mm. the weekend against this young redeveloping Hawthorne. Um, and you can't blame the young kids. The young kids are doing what young kids do, and they're good. Yeah, you know, Kyle Lehmans look good. Yeah. Um, was it Logan Logan Morris? Morris yeah. looks all right. Yeah, you know, well, I don't think Hitwood comes back in. No, well, I think Morris stays in. Well, he's he's doing a good job. So it's it's more experienced mm. players that are struggling at the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, so that that's a big concern. Now they're in a world of hurt at the moment. But you're you're right. They they well they're not rushing Will Ashcroft back. They'd already made that decision. So he's about round seventeen before he comes back in, and rightly so. It'll be an intriguing game when they come back from the bye and face the Western Bulldogs on the Friday night. Bulldogs will get them. Right. Bulldogs will win this week too. Okay. What are we speaking of this week? What right. are we looking forward to? I think this Friday week? night will be a good game. Collingwood Dogs, but. I'm going Thursday night. I think mm. um, top top eight clash, Port Adelaide versus Carlton. Um, Carlton, if they want to get top four, they're probably going to have to win this game. Mm-hmm. And same for Port Adelaide, if they both both teams Which need to win this game. Which going to turn up? Well, Port, I've said it numerous times, are the most frustrating yeah. team to watch or support follow because they make the easy stuff look really hard. And um, yeah. Yes. What's your top four teams for the end of the year? You reckon Who, who's the chance, the best chance to win it? Four? Swans, 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 Collingwood. Uh, Oh, looks Collingwood could slip out. They've got yeah, yeah. 15 injuries. Um, Get it right by the end of the season, though. Melbourne, Giant, Giants, if they can play consistent footy, yeah. even a bit on the weekend, they come in and out. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, think, I think Carlton, so I would go Sydney. Let's go Sydney, Port, Giants, Carlton. Yeah, so I'm similar. I'm Sydney, GWS, Collingwood, when they get their players back, mm-hmm. I agree. Carlton, I reckon Carlton, who well out of the eight at the moment. Where are they? Twelfth or so? well, no, eighth. eighth sorry, oh. they're coming on the weekend. But yeah, I still think they've got the capabilities to actually win it. So um, yeah, about the same as you there, Lynchy. I agree there. Uh, what are you looking forward to this weekend, Alistair? Well, Rockies are focusing on the top end, and and then mention Collingwood uh, Bulldogs, which will be a really good game. Colli- I- Speaking of weird fixturing, Collingwood's home game at Marvel Stadium against Stadium. the West. And Bulldogs. I talk about uh, Richmond not knowing where to, how to get to Marvel Stadium, Collingwood. Jeez, that's they unusual. A couple one. of weeks ago, actually. Yeah. Oh, did they? Yeah, right, yeah. West Coast. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's the game I'm looking forward to. West Coast St Kilda. Yes. Oh. At Optus Stadium, St Kilda under the pump. They've got, they have to win this. But as we've seen yeah, in the know, last you know few what, weeks, you know what inspire the Saints. <laughs> you know what inspire them this week at Moravan. Well. Watch on the flight, on the flight, on the way. Yeah, over. that's it. There, Bit of entertainment. Has there ever been a team that's been done by a hundred points starting favourite the next week? 
Oh, I'll have to West look Coast that up. West Coast are favourites. $1.77. West Coast play well at home. Meds. West Coast um, play very well at home. Tuesday morning. Well, over the last couple of rounds. No, they've, won, they've won three of their last four at home. And they, they beat Melbourne, been, didn't they? Yeah. And they yeah. should have probably beat Essendon. And, yeah, I think that's, yeah. Essendon were lucky to win that. So Saints got to win it. They you, they'd have it. to. Got to win it. Well, again, they've got some viewing on the plane to inspire them. <laughs> what are you looking forward to? Don't say Richmond Geelong. I'm looking forward to all the first three quarters of the Richmond game <laughs> <laughs> before you I'm walk looking, out. I'm looking forward to Richmond Geelong because I was very happy with how the Tigers played last week. They had a good crack. Much and Dustin Martin reminded everyone that you don't write off the champion. Anyway, I'm looking forward to all seven games this weekend. Okay. And you know why? Because at all seven games, you can get yourself a copy of the AFL record. No. Oh, uh, self-promotion. self-promotion. See, what you should be doing is yep. hand us, say, lead me in sort of saying about the footy record. Yeah. Yeah. Can't promote it yourself. Okay. Well, Still, just... what's um, – I hear there's a story. <laughs> there's an editorial in the footy record this week. Well, it's this not week. an editorial. It's a feature story. Oh, right. Yeah. And feature. written by yours truly. Oh, okay. And it's about the change. Your changing... debut column in the footy record? No, it's not actually. Oh, uh, I had – I, I, had a, I had a piece in the footy record when I was uh, 15 doing work experience. Oh. They used to get the work experience kid to interview a player. So I interviewed Andrew Rains. Rainsy. Oh, I interviewed your man. old mate Rainsy. Rainsy. Um, What's it about, the 210 so, start? Yeah, it's about how Twilight Footy and the changing habits of footy fans and what it means for the future of the old 2 o'clock Saturday afternoon game. And there's no 2 o'clock game this week. Well, no, all the, the traditional afternoon, one forty five, two 2 o'clock one. So uh, the Hawthorne-Adelaide clash will be the fourth and last Saturday afternoon Red Bull game at the MCG Ooh, for the whole year. Absolute blockbuster. It'd actually be a good game, that one. In front of about 15,000. Yeah, so um, no, it's the main feature in this week's AFL record. Six bucks at all good football grounds. Out so you're line. saying that there's only four Red Bull games left on no, a Saturday at, afternoon? At the MCG. Oh, at the MCG. Like Sorry. the traditional home yeah. of football. There's yeah. a few, but... Um, well, and maybe there's heaps. There's a heap. In South Australia and Western Australia yeah. would argue. He doesn't, he doesn't, we know that he doesn't <laughs> like interstate teams. So we've noticed that earlier. Vic bias. Yes. I wear my big V uh, proudly. With his um, labour hat. Oh, what is well, this labour party nah, it's, stuff? It's coming. teal now, I think. It's teal. It's, <laughs> oh, not Port Adelaide. <laughs> yeah, you would be teal. a teal as well. Yeah. I'm not, you're a teal. You wore the teal. Oh, I'm, you yes. wore teal. He's yeah. a tool. Yeah, yeah. yeah a tool. <laughs> the black and white. Yeah. No, you wore teal. Because yeah. the Port Adelaide's traditional colours, teal, right. black, no, and white. He got, he got it. Yeah. Oh, I got, he got, yeah. he got yeah. it. <laughs> just, just wasn't explaining that funny. It. Just explaining <laughs> it to Tom. Uh, but yes, get your AFL record. And Tom, you've got a push-up challenge as well. Do you want to give that a plug? Well, yeah. oh yeah, I signed up last night. I'm going to do what, yeah. 3,000 or 2,000 or something um, for the June from June 5 to... June 24. Right. And is going where? For Three, what charity? Uh, it's for mental health, um, the push-up challenge. So 3,249, that's how many people took their life, I think, in Australia last okay. year. So it's a good recognition. So yep. get behind that one. 24 days, about 142 43 a day. Details so. are on Tom's socials uh, to get around that. Oh, yeah. Can you send me a letter with the details or something? <laughs> yeah, if, you're not, if you're not on the socials. Tom, Tom will send you a fax. All right, no worries. Yeah, and, and page you as well. Beautiful. Um, <laughs> what are you? So what are you looking forward to? Are you looking forward to Carlton Port Adelaide? Yeah, Carlton Port. I'll tell you the multi though yeah, again. We recapped multi. it earlier. But yep. Melbourne take on Fremantle in Alice Springs. Uh, minus 13 and a half. We're going to take Melbourne. Very good. Um, at the line. Gold Coast, same game multi. Gold Coast Suns, 1 to 39. To win that game and the Lacocious to kick 2 plus. And Jeremy Cameron, four plus against Richmond. And how much is that pay? That is $22.34. Twenty two dollars thirty four. Get that all on the Thank Ned's you, app. Don't Richie you? Benno, you can get on the Ned's app. AFL Open Group as well. Yeah, get around all yeah. of those. It's always a good time on both of those things. Uh, all right, we're wrapping up the podcast. And probably the for same a... thing for what's your Triple M show? Yeah, well, yeah. it's all on Listener. Yeah, and it, yeah we are on the Listener app with Triple M. So in case you missed any of Tom's takes on the show just talk, this week, make sure him. you uh, listen to uh, Dead Set Legends or Triple M in Adelaide because they say the same app? stuff. That doesn't go through the wall. No, 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 don't Lynch, think so. Lynch, <laughs> I've got something. Lynchy Lynch, 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 <laughs> Lynchy's still struggling with the concept of FM radio. I got to hand it over to the kids. Can you download something? <laughs> very good. Or something. Tom, thank you. No, thanks, Dill. Thanks, Lynchy. Thank Lynchy, you, thank fellas. You. Very good. Well done to St Kilda too. Yes, congratulations. <laughs> 20 years, winning streak, 10 games. Very memorable. Thank you to Rich on the buttons. Thank you to Ryan. We'll catch you next week. Thanks for listening to Ned's AFL Unpopular Opinions. Enjoyed the podcasts? Remember to like and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts.
What's gambling really costing you? For free and confidential support, visit gamblinghelponline.org.au.